This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Start creating a beautiful website in just a few clicks, with no experience required. Hey guys, I know I've neglected fabric a bit lately, so I wanted to make sure I got a video done for Minecraft 1.18.2. This list is going to showcase some new mods released for fabric, which were all released over the past two months. You can find the links to any of these mods in the description below. Firstly, we have Visual Workbench. It turns your crafting table into containers so that items will remain inside even when the interface is closed. If you break a crafting table, then all the items will drop like when you destroy a chest. Items that are inside the crafting table will also be rendered on top, which is a nice feature to have. Friends and Foes adds mobs to Minecraft that either lost the mob vote or which were just added to the game. Currently, it adds the Copper Golem, Glare, Moo Bloom, and Illusioner. The developer is expecting to implement more in the future updates, like the Great Hunger, Isologger, and the Wildfire. There's already some mechanics, structures, and items implemented too. Glares can be tamed with glowberries so that they can follow you on adventures, whereas the Illusioner spawns in a shack or shows up during raids and will cast spells and fire arrows at you. With FreeCam, you can enter a spectator-like mode by pressing the X key. You'll be able to fly through blocks and fly around your world in general. It's especially useful if you're in a cave system and you get lost, so that you can find an exit. When you leave this mode, you'll be returned back to your original position. But be careful, your body can still be attacked by mobs when you're in this mode. Creeper Overhaul is also available for fabric. It adds some biome-specific creepers to Minecraft, such as the bamboo, cave, mushroom, jungle, and swamp creeper. Although, there's around 15 different creepers in total to find. They feature all new models instead of just being texture overhauls. So, they're a nice addition to the game. Some creepers have different behaviors too, like the mushroom creeper which won't attack the player or the snowy creeper which uses melee attacks instead of blowing up. Guard Villagers has also had a release for the latest version of Fabric. In a village, a group of guards will now spawn, who are equipped with armor, swords, and crossbows. They'll help defend a village from hostile mobs as well as raids. If you have the hero of the village effect, then you can interact with a guard to provide them with better equipment. Or you can have a guard follow you throughout the world to help you defeat your enemies. Any unemployed villagers can be turned into guards by giving them a sword or crossbow. Awesome Dungeons Nether Edition is a new expansion to Awesome Dungeons. It adds locations like the Tower Blaze, Giant Crimson Tree, Obsidian Palace, and Obsidian House. Some of these structures are really big and contain creatures like Piglins and Blaze, which also makes it a great alternative method for collecting Blaze Rods. And overall, it's great to have more locations to explore in the Nether. Likewise, there's also Awesome Dungeons End Edition. This mod includes the Castle Evoker, Palace, Pyramid, Hardcastle, and Pill. These structures are all of different sizes and spawn enemies like Evokers, Wither Skeletons, and Cave Spiders. With both of these mods, you want to search any barrels you come across, as that's where the loot is. In some of these end structures, there's also lots of useful items which can be mined, like Diamond and Emerald Blocks. Now you'll find large parrots spawning in your world in biomes like the plains, jungles, deserts, and taiga. There's quite a few designs and color variations to them, and they have really cool walking animations too. You can try to tame mega parrots by riding them, similar to a horse, and they'll need to be equipped with a saddle for you to control their movement. Parrots also accept horse armor for further defenses. What's great about the parrots is that they can jump from great heights and will slowly glide down, removing any chance of fall damage. If you kill them instead, they'll drop parrot meat, which can be cooked and eaten. A mob scarecrow can be crafted from two sticks, a fence, a hay bale, and a carved pumpkin. When it's placed down, it will scare hostile mobs away, within an 8-block radius, although you can increase this number with a command. The mod also includes some new plushies and statues of pigeons, cats, wolves, and iron golems, which will each scare away individual creatures like creepers and zombies. If you place down a turtle statue or a plushie, then it will attract zombies, which can be useful for setting up a mob farm, whereas the Endermite will draw an Enderman. This next mod adds a currency system into Minecraft, with bronze, 
silver and gold coins being added to the game. Inside your inventory, you can find a purse, which shows the amount of coins you've collected so far. These can be found when searching chests, killing some creatures, or trading with villagers, as they now use this currency system instead of emeralds. You can add coins to your purse by sneaking and right-clicking while holding them, and they can be withdrawn using the buttons in the interface. A new shop block can be crafted from three planks, two bronze coins, and a smooth stone slab. The shop is intended for multiplayer and allows you to sell items. While determining the cost in coins, other players can then buy them. This video has been brought to you by Squarespace. At Squarespace, you can start creating your own website in just a few clicks. You don't have to be an expert in web design or coding either, as they offer lots of templates to choose from, which can be customized and made your own. Whether you're wanting to create an online store, portfolio, or a membership type site, Squarespace has it all. If you're a content creator, you might like the idea of having a central location to store and showcase your videos, which can be neatly organized under multiple categories. There's even the ability to monetize them so that they can only be viewed through paid access or members of your community. You can choose to upload your own videos or embed them from third-party sites. If you like the idea of creating your own website, then visit squarespace.com forward slash power down. You'll get a free trial to experiment with, but you'll also get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. And thanks to Squarespace for supporting the channel. Mage Hands adds lots of hands which give some automation to Minecraft. They each have recipes apart from the Hostile Mage Hand, which can be found in the Nether. Hostile Mage Hands drop Mage Hand Essence, which is required to craft the other Mage Hands. Each hand does something different. For example, an Iron Mage Hand will search for hostile mobs and kill them, as long as it has a weapon to do so. The Gold Mage Hand will harvest fully grown crops and replant any seeds, whereas the Diamond Mage Hand can be used to point to the nearest ore block. The Extractinator is a new block that doesn't have a crafting recipe. Instead, you can find it underground in some wooden structures, where they'll already be placed. You can mine it and take it back to your base if you want to. Worthless blocks like cobblestone, gravel, sand, and netherrack can be placed on the Extractinator to receive more useful resources. Mostly, you can receive drops like clay, iron nuggets, coal, and raw copper. And you're not always guaranteed a drop either. It's actually quite rare. The mod adds silt and slush which can be found underground, and placing these on the Extractinator will yield better resources, like diamonds, ender pearls, and emeralds. Subterrestrial will add structures to the underground of your world. Beneath the surface, you can find cabins, spawning, and mines. They have multiple stories, and there are some different designs depending on the biome they spawn in. Each cabin has variations of their own, too, so you shouldn't expect to find two identical structures. Inside, you can find different workstations like blast furnaces, smithing tables, and anvils. You can usually expect to find one or two chests, too. If you have an extractinator installed, then an extractinator will spawn in these cabins. Biome particle weather changes some of Minecraft's weather effects, while also adding new ones. I think a lot of these weather effects look more realistic. And you can find rain, wind, snow, blizzards, and sandstorms have been either added or changed. Some really nice features have been added like tumbleweeds and deserts. Blossom will allow bees to pollinate leaves, which will cause them to flower. Over time, these leaves will grow until they're turned into apples. Then you can use shears on them to harvest the apples, which gives a lot more than you'd normally get for breaking leaves. Fish of Thieves adds lots of species of fish to Minecraft, which are originally from the Sea of Thieves game. You can find the likes of Pondies, Wild Splash, Wreckers, and Stormfish. They all have their own spawning conditions, like biomes and spawn times. You can collect them in buckets or cook them for food. The first feature added by Extra Arrows is that arrows now have tiers. They can be made up of materials like flint, iron, gold, diamond, and netherite and each tier gives additional attack damage, and some can disable shields. There's also lots of new arrows to use alongside your bow, like ender arrows which teleport you, slime arrows which bounce off walls. Padded arrows are useful for target practice as they deal no damage and won't get stuck in blocks, 
Lightning arrows are powerful, as they'll strike a target with lightning. And the mod also includes explosive, torch, tracking, and vexing arrows, with vexing arrows being able to phase through blocks. Your Items Are Safe is a gravestone mod that adds no new blocks. When you die, a chest will spawn at your death location, which has an armor stand on top wearing your equipment, and a sign with your name. The mod will keep all your items safe so you don't have to worry about items despawning. Although, with the default settings, a chest and armor stand will only be created if you have enough wood in your inventory when you die, otherwise they'll drop like normal. End Portal Recipe allows you to build 12 end portal frames from 3 end stones, 5 eyes of ender, and a dragon egg. Because the recipe requires a dragon egg, you'll need to defeat the ender dragon before crafting new portal frames as possible, and the ender dragon will always drop an egg with this mod installed. If you have a silk touch pickaxe, then you can break already existing end portal frames. You're able to build a new portal frame at a location of your choosing, fill it with ender eyes and activate it with a flint and steel. You'll now be able to create a crock pot from 5 copper ingots. Then it can be placed over a campfire to boil, or you can activate it with redstone instead. Add some water, then ingredients like meat, bread, and vegetables to start making your own stew. While holding a bowl, you can right click the crock pot to take some stew out, and the hunger and saturation values are determined by the contents of the stew and how long it's boiled. Cami's minecart tweaks changes minecarts. Now they can be linked and will move together as long as they're connected with a chain. Furnace minecarts can be fueled, which will cause it to pull all connected carts, which would be good for some automation. In general, minecarts will be a bit faster and will deal damage to any entities on the tracks. Airhop is a new enchantment which can be obtained from chess, trading, or fishing. There's three levels to the enchantment, and each level is an additional jump that you can do mid-air. When air hopping, your boots can be damaged, and performing a hop requires at least six food bars. That concludes our list. I'll make sure to get another one of these done soon. I'm working on a Forge version right now, as well as a data pack video, so stick around for those.